I'm Paul Sullivan, your host on the Company of Dads podcast, where we explore the sweet, sublime, strange, and silly aspects of being a lead dad in a world where men often feel they have to hide, or at least not talk about their parenting role. I know this from firsthand experience as a lead dad to my three girls, three dogs, three cats, and three fish, who are remarkably all still alive. I did this while managing my career and striving to be an above average husband. One thing I know for sure about being a lead dad is it's not a normal role. You're not doing what dads have traditionally done, going to work and leaving the parenting to mom or someone else. Nor are you always welcome into a world where moms are the primary caregivers. But here at the Company of Dads, our goal is to shake all that off and focus on what really matters, family, friendship, finance, and fun. Today, my guest is Chris Bell. The New Hampshire guy originally, he's called Austin, Texas home for almost two decades. A classically trained musician, he used to teach, but now he's what he calls a stunt guitarist. More on that later. He and his wife had known each other since they were kids, but they reconnected 20 years ago. He's a lead dad to two boys. Most recently, he's made a reputation for himself as a luthier, a word I've been dying to use in an introduction for years. And he's got some serious thoughts on the challenges of being a lead dad. Chris, welcome to the Company of Dads podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. You're you're my first luthier. I'll I'll, oh, I'll, def, I'll okay. define that word later on for, for this. Excellent. Um, Excellent. How compatible or incompatible is being a musician with being a husband and a father? <laughs> uh, depends. Depends on what kind of musician you are, right? Okay. Um, a musician takes. One like you are, one one who 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 gets called in for gigs, one who had a, a career as a teacher, one who has a graduate right. degree in music, a, a real musician, not 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 some guy just you know strumming away to pass the time, but a but a real legit musician as, as you are. I would I would say it's challenging. What was the question? How compatible mm. or or incompatible? Slightly. Yeah. Slightly, yeah. yeah, slightly. It's tough. It's tough. Um, you know, in a nutshell. Yeah, uh, most of my work happens in the afternoon and in the evening time. Right? So I when your so. wife, so when your wife's at work and your kids are at school, so or, you know you, you, that's when you well, have your free time, and then when they're home from work and school, that's when you actually begin your work. That's right. That's right. And as a parent, you know, uh, you know, we used to refer to you know the hours of uh, five thirty to eight thirty as the witching hour, oh, yeah. right? It was like just insanity at the house. So, uh, yeah. So if you, if you were me and you were, uh, you know, hold up in your office teaching lessons, uh, to, you know, students and adult professionals and whatnot, and you're, you're not there, uh, during the witching hour, uh, that is, you know, it's problematic. Yeah. Right. Um, I- I mean, again, I'm not a musician. Uh, yeah. You know, I, so, I took guitar as a kid, but I think about it. I, I did a podcast uh, a couple weeks ago with a fellow named Tony Moss, and Tony uh, is a James Beard Award-winning chef uh, in Boston, awesome. and great, great run. You know, 20 plus years had his own restaurant, and he's uh, shifting to different things. He's, he's a lead dad now, but it was really incompatible with him mm-hmm. being a parent because you know you're running your restaurant, you may not always be cooking in there but you got to be at the restaurant because people want to see you and i think like being a chef and being a musician is probably similar in the way that you know much so. your peak hours of, of work mm-hmm. peak hour, when people want to come see nobody wants to see you at noon they want to see you at you know eight o'clock um yeah. when they when they've left their own children at home uh with a babysitter so they can go out and uh forget <laughs> right uh it makes me laugh because even to this day after over 20 years of being a professional musician, uh, I'll, you know, I'll talk to friends or whatever, and they'll say, when are you playing next? And I'll say, oh, well, you know, I've got a gig at the blah, blah, blah with the so-and-so. And they'll immediately say, oh, great. Will Jen be there? My wife. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she's a, she's parenting. Someone's got to be home. Like, yeah. you're, you're exactly, you know what I, mean? that, I mean, at this point they're sort of older and we're, we don't, we're moving on from babysitter and whatnot, but I, that always made me sort of chuckle because yeah. just like what you said, it's, it, you know, it was, it was funny. It was like, Oh no, actually somebody needs to be holding the fort down here. Yeah. Uh, 
that's just not going to be possible. So, you know, when we've talked in the past, you, you told me how uh, you were doing, uh, I don't want to misdescribe it, um, but like a graduate concert, graduate sort of level a presentation for your master's degree. Oh, and yeah. your son was a couple weeks old at the time. Uh-huh. And that's when, yeah. tell, tell, tell what clicked then? What, what was it that made you realize, huh, I'm a dad now and a professional musician. Uh, I'm going to do some serious juggling. So, so we had a two-year-old and I was, um, I went back and got my master's degree in music composition and was doing that part-time and uh, parenting all of the above. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think two weeks after my younger son was born, um, I, I finished my degree and I had to give a lecture recital where I, where I performed for an hour with a small quartet and then spoke in front of the auditorium with my, all of my written music and, uh, you know, on the overhead projector and kind of discussed, uh, uh, you know, all of the musical devices you, that you, I You held used. forth, you yeah. held forth, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and I had, I was terribly ill and they were, there was construction going on next door. So it was like, it was insanity. It was, it was absolute insanity. We hadn't really slept. The takeaway from that was, wow, I'm capable of doing a lot more than I thought I was. Because the lecture went great. Um, And um, my kid's still alive, you know, and doing well. Uh, But wasn't that also a moment for you in which you realized, huh, maybe I'm going to have to make some changes here. Maybe there are trade-offs that I hadn't quite thought. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think there was less of a light bulb moment, but more of these, those episodes kind of adding up right that there was um yeah there was a moment where where um i think after i finished my degree you know there was some kind of uh soul searching there about like well what's going to be best for the family ecosystem yeah um and you know my my wife is a software developer She's the smartest person I know uh, and has a wonderful career. And, you know, we live in a wonderful town, uh, Austin, which is not only known for music, but also for high tech. But it was that there was a thing where it was like, okay, well, so we're, are, am I going to move to, uh, you know, Biloxi, Mississippi and be an adjunct jazz guitar professor there? No, no, no. we're not going to do that. We, you know, we live in a lovely neighborhood and school system's great. And, my wife's working. And so, yeah, so there was a, there was a real moment where it was kind of like, okay, look, you know, if, if, um, if indeed the goal is family, mm-hmm. right. And, and to work and have a successful formula here, somebody's going to have to play stay at home ball. Yeah. Um, and it was going to be me. It was, well, was there, a, it was sort of a no-brainer. Well, that's really. what I say. But was yeah. there an explicit conversation when you sort of said, "Hey, we should do this," and you know, was it with the two-year-old? Was it when your I second think, son came no, along? Well, I think there was just there was it was an ongoing conversation, and then I just my wife is very supportive of my music, and that's probably the understatement of the century. But we, yeah, we had we had a lot of conversations about about how life as a musician and sort of be gone every evening, sometimes come home at three in the morning. Every lead dad can relate to this one. Well, maybe not every day, but I came home from the local jazz club here at the Elephant Room. And um, that gig was over at two. I get home at like three, two. My wife standing in the living room, tears streaming down her face, holding our younger son, who's screaming like he's been tased, right? <laughs> right? And I come in with my gear. I'm like, hi. And she just hands me the kid <laughs> and then turns and goes straight to bed, right? So I'm <laughs> trying to get Miles, you know, my younger kiddo to calm down. And right about the time I get him to calm down, the two-year-old's up. Oh, 100%. About 5 a.m., woo And I'm thinking, not going to bed. You not know? going to bed. Skipping that. Nope. Yeah, I think it's so, something to do with the second child. I have these memories. Like our our first child, you know, three daughters. She 
slept so well the first one and the second one comes on like fuck this shit's easy i'm i'm a yeah. parent i yeah. got this i got this i'm like duncan one. from the free throw line yeah yeah i, was like, yeah. I don't know you, you people are weak i don't know why you're complaining like, being a dad is easy uh the second one comes on, and sam doesn't doesn't sleep doesn't like believe like does it like that's her religion is not sleeping like she does not believe it and so i'll same thing i'll like you know, like an island in the kitchen, just doing laps uh, around the kitchen. Yeah. Finally, I get tired. I'd sit in the in a chair, this chair that I couldn't wait to throw out because I had so many bad memories of it. You know, it was a rocking chair yeah. for babies. And I would fall asleep, you know, ne- neck yeah. back. Yeah, pain. Yeah. Oh. And then exactly the same thing. The yeah. older one would come in and yeah. I was like, oh my God, I don't, I don't believe this. This is, yeah. You know. Yeah, the conversation was happening along the way. But I said to my wife at one point, I think, this seems right to me that that I think that we're fortunate enough to be in a situation where I could phase my students out. Um, I love playing live music. I love doing gigs. It's interwoven into my DNA, and I don't want to stop doing that. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I'll commit to sort of doing that within reason. But I think this works for me to to maybe take more of a lead dad role. Yeah. And and what's funny is when I when I said that to my wife, I actually saw like this look in her face of relief. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that feeling of like, thank God that you have that you're you know you're willing to throw yourself yeah. on the grenade for this, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't like a light bulb moment, but it was this thing where she was like, wow, I like, I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. This is not going unnoticed, you know? Um, when you think about it, if, if I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I could be wrong. I don't know if the official model, probably not the official model on a state crest, but I, like an unofficial model of Austin is something like, isn't like keep Austin weird. Isn't that? So, uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, is this a, and I've been to Austin, it's amazing, uh, yeah. great barbecue music, everything. Yeah. Um, was this a role that was easier to, to do in a, a place like, you know, Austin to say, okay, I'm, I'm the lead dad. I'm the primary parent. I'm the one that you're going to call uh, for all this stuff. Uh, my wife, obviously, she's still involved, but she she has less flexibility than I do. Or did you find, you know, some challenges in 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 being accepted by you know the other parents, pr- predominantly predominantly moms? Um, I think the real challenge was with myself. Hmm. I was thinking about this the other day too. On some level. <laughs> being a musician is such an odd career. Um, and many folks don't know what that actually means, you know, to, you know, I'm going to go make a record for somebody and then a couple days in the studio and then that job is over, right? I didn't get fired, but that job is over, right? And then I'm, then I go play a wedding, then I go play the jazz club, then I go do a honky tonk gig and then I do it, you know, it's just kind of like, this wacky thing and there are different times, right? It's just sort of, it's kind of nuts, right? Yeah. So so I did, I did live a strange existence already. Um, and on some level that prepared me for the stay at home dad thing where like, yeah, there's a parent teacher thing. I need to go in, mm-hmm. right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and talk to the teacher and say, oh yeah, you know, your kiddos, struggling with the math thing or this right yeah um so on some level like yeah i was already there uh but yeah there, but then on the other hand yeah it's, you know it's challenges of sort of like getting that straight in your head i mean i am kind of a um you know i'm a sort of a selfish musician right i mean all musicians are kind of into their own thing, they practice and they right. they're focused Solitary. and they work on their yeah. own thing you know i often tell my musician friends uh, you know, the, being a parent made me a better person because I'm not always thinking it's about me all the time, mm. which is what musicians do, right? Constantly working on my art, my craft. Yeah, I'm, such yeah. a, I'm such a sensitive artist, you know? But but the role of lead dad having to actually like, I got one, you know, poopy kid 
sprinting this direction and it's like you know trying to take care of all of these things you know and of course as they get older it's like navigating the grocery store and kung fu and <laughs> soccer you know all right it in a way it, it's afforded me like, meaning like, like being like, the like, the lead dad kind of took you out of yourself you weren't thinking okay i need to practice this and I do this i or right, you're so, not you can't right. see perfection you can't try to play a song you know perfect you can't kids are not parenting you're not going to achieve right. perfection because as, as soon as you think oh fuck i'm awesome i just did that yeah. and then something else happens that's right and then it's yeah. just a complete shit show right after that yeah yeah so anyway yeah so it's great right i mean it's like were there some challenges absolutely absolutely yes um i think but i think the more of the challenges were in my head. How did you uh, resolve you know, that? How did you resolve the challenge? Because you know, so many lead dads I talked to say similar things. I mean, how did you come to terms with those, you know, challenges in in, in your head? Like, you know, we we think that the moms are judging us. We think that other dads are judging us. Sure. Go to work, but maybe they just don't care. They don't give a shit at all. They're they're, they're focused on their own thing, <laughs> and it's yeah. it's it's in our own head. So how did you, you know, make peace with that? Yeah, it's an ongoing process uh, that. Uh, it's, it's like anything. It's like exercise, building, building up this idea, not, not, um, you know, not to get too um, uh, philosophical about it, but uh, uh, expectation is the root of all suffering. Yeah. Right. And, um, and on some level, uh, there was a realization that, um, I'm the luckiest person you know, but not for anything that I anticipated or for anything trivial. Like I'm actually really lucky in all the important ways. You know, I have a wonderful wife and you know, good looking, healthy kids, right? You know, like like I won on all these all these <laughs> amazing levels. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard, right? We all, I mean, we all, a lot of us uh would like to get out there and do it make a mark achieve right and maybe, maybe that's a societal thing it's like what do you do how are you yeah. out there sticking it to the man and it's it can be tough i think yeah when you're slugging it out to forget that actually maybe the thing you're doing is developing a wonderful relationship with your kids and your wife sure. Sure. Right. Uh, okay. So here's, here's an interesting story that I like to share with people. So there's, there's a guy um, in town who I admire greatly. He's a fantastic musician. And um, back when we, uh, we taught at this private music school together and um, my buddy's 10 or 15 years older than I am. Uh, this was, this had to be 20 years ago. Uh, but he said, uh, oh yeah, my daughter is getting her uh, driver's license. You know, we're teaching her to drive. And I said, hey man, are you freaking out? Does that make you like a nervous wreck? And at the time I didn't have kids. Yeah. And he said, let me tell you a little something about kids. It's kind of like a savings account. Showing up every day is a big thing, right? Had I not showed up every day up until she was 16 years old, uh, I would, be worried sick yeah but i've been present from the beginning to here and at this point you know my kid is is growing up and i've done everything i can mm -hmm. to help her make the right decisions right and all i can do is let her go yeah and do her thing and that resonated very deeply with me you know and i think you know then going into you know few years later i started having kids and yeah this, this whole evolution that we're that brings us together right so that made an impact on me it's like okay i'm gonna need to be present here yeah it, it's we made you a know? decision early on with our kids and it's more or less worked out uh that we would eat dinner together um and we've been fortunate with, with timing and schedules that for the most part, like we can be there at like six yeah. thirty, six fifteen, six thirty, and and yeah. eat dinner yeah. together. And some nights, maybe twenty percent of the nights, it's amazing. Like last night was amazing. Yeah. We talked yeah. about all kinds of different things. It was great. 
Yeah. And some portion of the night, greater than 20%, maybe like 35%, are awful because everybody is yelling and screaming and sure. you're like, oh my God, just eat, eat your green beans. Just, just have three green, you're almost yeah. a teenager. I'm not yeah. gonna negotiate, just eat yeah. some vegetables. Eat. I'm yeah. eating them, yeah. you eat them. Yeah. Uh, and then the other, the, the remaining, yeah. whatever that is, 45% or so, is just, just, it's just that you're just there. But it's like, yeah. if you only, if I only showed up for dinner once a week, and it was one of the bad nights. I'd be like, man, this is awful. Or if I only, you know, you're like, whoa. And we have, you know, you know, now that the kids are old, you hear, you know, parents are saying, um, yeah, they come home and say, oh yeah, you know, uh, so and so, they they feed the kids, uh, and then send the kids to do their own thing, and then the husband and wife eat alone. And there's one night that's particularly bad, and my wife Laura said, why don't we do that? I was like, I don't know, maybe we should, but it's not who we are. Like, and 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 I looked at it like our kids, for good or bad, will remember that we were there we yeah. really you know yeah. we we were there and we were present and we listened and we tried to set a good example and we ate their our vegetables so we could tell them to to eat their vegetables yeah it reminds me of i was riding to san antonio <clears throat> doing a steakhouse gig and the guy driving was a new dad and he was you know, feeling a lot of the pressures and the challenges and the, the drummer on the gig sitting in the passenger seat, he's not married, doesn't have kids. So that the new dad is talking to me and, you know, telling me all this crazy stuff. Of course, I'm sitting in the back laughing, just thinking like, oh yeah, man, I totally, I completely relate to, I remember, I remember yeah, yeah. back then, right? And the guy in the passenger seat said, you guys are scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> And I said to him, well, man, let me tell you this. Parents in the company of not the non-parent person, I, I don't mean this terrible, like to, that everybody yeah. should have children or and you're a bad person if you don't. But, but I was like, but, you know, there's a lots of subtle things. Just this, this is to your point. Like there are a lot of things that are hard to report um, to you if you're not there or if you don't have kids and uh, those are wonderful, uh, but sometimes they're hard to articulate. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe it is just sort of like a dinner where everybody didn't yell at each other. And that's a, and, it's and when a you win. look back on it, you're it's actually right. There's a, yeah. there's, there are moments where you're kind of like, there, there was a real special moment, you know? And I just said, a lot of times it's, it's, you know, it's, it's easier for conversation for us to joke about these silly things about, you know, me coming home late at night and Jennifer handing me the crying baby and not getting me sleep. That's something you could probably relate to. Right. But, but there's a certain aspect, you know, of this thing that is very sweet uh, mm -hmm. that maybe it's hard to articulate. So don't, don't, don't be flipped out about it. It's, it's okay. There's actually a lot of wonderful stuff, you know, it's, yeah. I agree. And it's one of those things where, <laughs> You know, I have obviously high aspirations for the company dads, but like one of the things, if I could help accomplish it, we've gotten to a point now where if you uh, are lead dad and, and you're working at a company or this and you have a boss, if you somehow put down uh, going to a child's soccer game, it's acceptable. You can you can go out, you can go to the soccer game. Sure. But if you were to put down, this is what I would like to accomplish. If you were to put down um, child needs a walk and a talk and maybe an ice cream with dad and blocked out the same amount of time in your calendar. People be like, what a fucking lazy bastard that guy is. Right. These people, are but it's like, yeah. if we say it's for something, it was like the ballet recital, the soccer game, the you know middle school graduation, whatever it is, you can get out for that. But if you say, you know, look, like this is important work, you know, I, my work is important, but parenting is important. And I got it, you know, I, I just know my kid and I know my kid needs just to, you know, and, and the only way a child, you know, we all know this, like the best conversations you have are when you're alone with one of your kids and you're just that's driving. Right. And that's right. They're trapped you, in the car. You're trapped in the car, <laughs> and, but it doesn't happen in like right. the first yeah. five minutes. It happens at some, you know, random point as you're going on. So I would love to us to get to a point as a society where you can say, look, I'm, I'm still going to do everything I have to do. Uh, you don't need command and control. You don't need to tell me what to do, but, but I just, I know that my, son daughter needs to take a walk and yeah absolutely or just not be flipped out i, I you know I, I think in our phone conversation we covered this ground of like going to a 
company meeting with my wife, right? And so I'm meeting her coworkers. This obviously pre-pandemic, we don't do that anymore, right? <laughs> Shaking hands. Anyway, uh, yeah, they say, well, what do you do? Well, I say, I'm a stay-at-home dad, right? To be able to like lay that down. Just say it. And, and have yeah. people say <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? Or be okay with that, right? Because it's tough. It's tough. I mean, I do deeply believe that that's a higher calling, right? I mean, that it's a, it's a worthy thing. You know, yeah. I know we're experiencing it. It's great. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's intense, right? It's intense. Cause it's, it's, the, it's not the norm. Wouldn't it be great if people were like, man, that's really or like all of a yeah. sudden you let that out. And then the next response was, wow, that's fantastic. Tell me about your kids. If you tell people like, you know, oh yeah, I'm a, a jazz guitarist. Like, oh man, you know, in college I played guitar and you, you can never do this. this. And wouldn't it be great if, if you said, I, I, I'm a dad, uh, I, I'm a lead dad. And I like, really? So, okay, I got a question for you about my child, you know, cause you're around your child a lot more. And here's my question. Have you ever right. had this, this, and this happen? Right. And you're How like, are your kids? Yeah, How many kids totally. do you have? Do you ever right. run into this? Right, like, yes. Boom, right there. Instead of like, you know, they take their beverage and wander off because they're like, I try not to talk to my kids, you know, right. or so, you know what I mean? Like, like right? I, I look, I remember when I would tell people, you know, I was at the New York Times for 13 years and you'd meet people, particularly um, sort of from 2016 on, and they'd say, Do you know Maggie Haberman? Do you know Maggie? Maggie Haberman, of course, covered Donald Trump, you know, won a Pulitzer, amazing reporter. And I don't, uh, though it's a wild story. She dated my friend freshman year in college and to, to, to cross all, but I don't know her at all. But I always wish like if I had met her, uh, like when she became really famous, I would have loved to have had like asked her to just like sign like 20 pieces of paper. And and when people said to me like, do you know Maggie Hammer? I was like, here's her autograph. I could just hand it out. It's like, but imagine if people would say the same thing, get that excited about, oh man, you, you got an 11th grade. I got an 11th grade. I got a real question here. Let's pivot a bit. I, I want to talk a bit about you uh, and because I want to use the word luthier again. Okay. Uh, luthier is, of course, somebody who makes instruments out of wood and string, and you make incredible guitars uh, under the brand Bell Tower Guitars. Um, what are they like? You know, what? how did you get into this? How did you decide to, you know, do you have a guitar around you can show it? Like, how did you decide yeah. to sort of yeah. make uh, guitars and... Uh, I want to hear it. It's a great story. Um, here's here's one. This wow. is uh, this is uh, one of mine. Uh, so this this guy uh, Sunday cool. I have to go play a jazz brunch gig. So I'll I'll bring this guy with me. Does it does it um, have a name? Is that like Lucille or what? What's well, the name? Um, so this this model is the Luchador. Ooh, the fighter. I like it. That's, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so I make several different kinds. I'll, I'll bore you with one more. These are like, like you didn't ask to see pictures of the kids, so I will torture you with the pictures of the kids, but I could torture you with pictures of guitars. Whoa. So um, that's so, so sweet. Wow, baby so, blue yeah. or like a so, sky blue? Yeah. yeah, so that one, uh, uh, this one will go, uh, there's a honky tonk gig a week from Friday. So I'll go play like uh, kind of Bakersfield what? country music, and there'll people be two stepping, and I'll be playing that guy. But what's on, the bar? The is that, what is that bar called? Is it a way? What's the bar called that's on there? Well, oh, oh the Whammy Bar. Whammy bar. bar. That's what I thought yeah. it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so the guitar story is is awesome. Um, so yeah, so I gave up teaching, uh, became a, a lead dad. I've continued to play gigs um, in the evening, but I don't overdo it. I play a couple times a week. You know, I play about a hundred gigs a year. I don't get in a van and I don't go on tour. I just, I stayed at home, right? So I, I got my yayas out a couple of nights a week um, doing all kinds of different music for people. Um, and it's great. Uh, then the kids uh, went to public school. So, you know, there was, there was a lot of free time that I got back. Yeah. Right. So all of a sudden now it's like, well, I got the, uh, the boys were going to a neighborhood school. So I'd walk them over to school a couple blocks away. It's awesome. We got a skateboarding skateboard over there. Come back. 
And then I'm back here and I've got, you know, uh, time on my hands. Um, and of course there's all kinds of, you know, glamorous lead dad stuff like laundry and grocery shopping and prepping meals and all that sort of stuff. But, but yeah, I was like, okay, well, um, you know, I do like a couple records a year, but the rest of the time I'm really kind of free during the daytime. And I, uh, I did some odds and ends things. I was not handy. I helped my brother who's a car, uh, he's a Finnish carpenter. And, and if he were on the podcast, he would laugh when I said, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know what end of the hammer to use. I mean, like I was completely clueless, right? A total guitar player. Uh, and I mentioned to another lead dad who, uh, in town, I said, hey, Mark, I'm thinking about, you know, getting a part-time job, you know, try to stay out of trouble. And he said, hey, you know, uh, there's a place in town that makes beautiful mandolins and I'm friends with one of the guys that works there and I think they're looking for somebody and I said oh man you know that's way above my pay grade yeah. you know like I'm like I'm completely not handy he goes no 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 if I remember correctly uh I don't think they want somebody coming in there thinking that they know anything like I think this is but, like but real- you were like sweeping the shavings off the floor like well, where do you start yeah. with that yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. exactly where it went I went in there and Here's me being the luckiest guy in the world. Who interviews me? But a guy who's uh, from Vermont, right? Uh, where my folks moved us to Vermont when I uh, started high school. And then I, I went to my undergraduate at the University of Vermont. So of course on my resume, there's yeah. all my music stuff, but it says, oh, I graduated from the University of Vermont in such and such a year. The guy interviewed me, looks down and says, yeah, me too. He graduated from Vermont the same year same. and his family's from the same town in Vermont that my wife's family's from. So who gets the job? Me. That, that right? guy. That this, guy. Is, this is when I win, right? Yeah. So yeah, so um, it, it, was, it was almost sweep the shavings up, yeah. right? It was basically like, you know, here's, here's a block of wood. Here's how the grain goes. This is how you look at the grain. This is what you, and that's how it started. It was like absolute beginning. And then they'd say, hey, you know, just run these through the planer. And this is how this, this is how the planer works. So yeah. for two and a half years, I went over there and, you know, I'm, I think it's fair to say I have pretty good hand-eye coordination. I've played ice hockey and I'm a golfer, you know, like, like I'm a pretty athletic guy done martial arts so it's like when they started handing me stuff i can work with my hands and they realized oh geez that this guy can figure it out yeah so yeah so i did that for two two and a half years and then finally uh i was i started buying tools and started messing and i I like i think the first thing i did was i made i made a a guitar neck this yeah that was the that was the start and then i think my wife was like why don't you just like build a shop and just start making guitars. I mean, you work at a mandolin shop, but really you're a guitar player. Right. So I was like, and, and then she said, remember how you used to always make fun of those mandolin makers before right. you were. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was basically the deal. Again, going back to the, my wife being supportive, of course, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. So I built a shop in my backyard and started making guitars first, just for like, I made a few from me and then close friends said, Oh, hey, look at that. You want to make me one? Okay, sure, great. Well, I'll make you one. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I've been doing it since 2015 or 16, maybe. That's great. When did you go out on your own? It, it's awesome. Uh, I guess maybe four years okay. ago. Yeah. It, it reminds me of a story that's going to sound completely yeah. unrelated, but um, f- for my f- first book, it was called Clutch, about why some people do well on pressure and others don't do well under pressure, why some people are clutch and other people choke. I went up to West Point and spent a lot of time with some of the cadets and some of the professors and then kind of get deep into sort of how they train you to be a, a soldier. And I remember uh, reading at one point that, you know, the, the best marksmen uh, in the army, and I'm sure every branch, but the best marksmen, and I, I actually remember I went and spent some time with the Navy SEALs later on at the Times. And the, the best shooters were not the ones who grew up hunting and you know going around with their parents and you know target shoot. some of the best ones were the ones that had never fired a, a, a rifle before in their life because if you just listened to what 
the instructors were telling you about marksmanship and how to fire a rifle. They knew exactly how to do it. So you would have no bad habits. It would say, this is how you do it. This is what you do it. And, and because you didn't know anything, you just listened. But all the ones who came in and said, oh, I killed the deer when I was 12, whatever, they had all these bad habits and they were never as good as the ones that were a blank slate. And I'm wondering if that's how it was with you and mandolin making. I have some thoughts about this. Okay. And it does relate to being a lead dad. I think, I think that uh, being a student is a learned skill. And by that, I mean, um, I had this experience of, uh, I went to college, became a professional guitar player. Then I was like, but I can't read music. I don't really know a lot. I play these kind of rock R&B bands, but I want to I wanna be a professional guitar player. So at 25, I moved to Boston and I went to the Berkeley College of Music. And I was a lot older than a lot, you know, the 18 year olds, right? And it was a humbling, uh, moment to uh, to having been an adult living on my own right making a living in this thing that I'm now going back to the beginning right and sort of assuming the the mindset of a student and say okay I'm here to learn right mm -hmm. so uh, and then you know, reconnect with my wife. I come down here, do some stuff. I'm teaching. I decide, you know, I really, maybe, maybe I would like to be a professor. I went back to school again. This time I'm in my early thirties and I'm back with 22 year old kids in grad school. Right. And I, the point I'm trying to make is that I think that like this thing of, of like going back into a situation where you, you put on the the hat of the student, right? You stop saying, uh, let me tell you teacher what I know about this subject, right? Like, so these guys that became great shooters maybe didn't have an experience, but they did have the ability to let their ego go away right. and listen to the instructor. And the instructor yeah. would say, hey man, you gotta do it like this. And they'd say, okay, I'm gonna try it like that. Before I judge, before I think I got a better idea, right? I'm gonna just, Right? Yeah. And they're and they become good at it. Right. And so I think this 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 works with the parenting thing too, is again, on some level, when I'm handed this new thing, which is lead dad, mm -hmm. and I don't have a print for it, I do have some experience about being okay with the fact that I'm in a situation where I'm being humbled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You know, yeah. that's a it's a big thing. It's a, it's a real skill, you know? Um, I, anyway, it's something I, I sort of feel like I've, I've kind of noticed. Um, and I think it, it, it sort of relates to the clutch thing too, right? Is that after a period of time, there's a, there's a moment where I think like, I think I can figure this out. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really know. I don't know anything about this thing that we're talking about, but I, but I figured other stuff out. Yeah. You know, I figured out how to bend wood over heat and steam. <laughs> right. You know, like, like, you know, I mean, like, like I, I figured out some pretty difficult things. I think I, I can do this. Bending you know? wood over heat and steam. And I'm wondering like, yeah, bell tower, bell tower guitars. This, and all that. But why not? Yeah. Why don't you call it like, this Le right. like Lex Luthier? What about Lex Luthier? Oh, Wouldn't that have been a well, great name? So be uh, bell tower is a nickname of mine. I'm six, five. And of course, my last name is Bell. And so uh, my buddies uh, at the University of Vermont uh, nicknamed me the Bell Tower. Yeah. Right. So Bell Tower is always sort of stuck. Um, and uh, I, I want to show you this too. So my, my um, logo here is a luchador mask with a bell in the Oh, wow. In yeah. The head. And, and uh, this woman who... Uh, is a friend of my wife's who's a designer. She said, why don't you let me, when I was making guitar, she said, why don't, why don't you let me take a stab at coming up with a logo for you? In our conversations, I was talking to her about music and like my thoughts on music. Yeah. And I said, you know, when I was a young guy playing music, I was not the best guitar player among my, my young friends. Um, 
but I stuck with it and I'm a hard worker. And um, on some level in my mind, I relate being a professional musician to being like a cage fighter. If you could just stay alive in there long enough, right? You, you're gonna kinda, somehow <laughs> you're gonna get your opportunity, right? You know? And it's basically like, it's a, it's a, it's a cage match to the death, you know? And so in those conversations, we were talking about it. And then she sent me the, uh, the luchador mask with the bell. And I just, it was like the clouds broke open and angels were singing. I was like, that's it. That is, that's totally the logo. <laughs> in, in case some people come into this conversation late, you are a, a jazz guitarist. You are not no. like a heavy no. metal guitarist no. or like no. death metal, like slamming no. the guitar, but still the struggle. And, I like it. Right. And even like, like to narrow it down, I'm really into like the fifties acoustic jazz, Kenny Burrell, uh, uh, Barney Kessel, Grant Green, like, like, like the real acoustic sound. It's not like jazz rock of the seventies. That's fine. It's cool. It's fine. But, but yeah, I'm definitely an old school enthusiast. So yeah. So then we've got this kind of wild logo on the, uh, I love it. On the guitar. Um, Chris, thank you yes. for being a guest today. I always like to give the guests the sort of last word, you know, take oh, it wherever boy. you want, best thing, worst thing, most memorable thing, advice you have to other lead dads. What 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 comes to mind? Boy, um, that's a good question. I, I, um, I did a record for a guy um, and there was a lyric in one of his songs uh, that resonated with me. I'm in the control booth with the headphones and I hear him sing something to the effect of trying to understand um, my wants versus my needs. Mm. And it resonated with me for a while. And I thought, you know, that's a great line about like, I was, you think I want this or I want that but like do I really need that right so trying to understand trying to understand yeah. like your your wants and your needs yeah. and trying to kind of figure out what those are to you right and trying yeah. to get settled in here about what it is what your priorities are. Do you, you know, I like, like, agree 100% because like, yeah, you, you can you right? pare it down. You can really pare it down and like, okay, I may want that, but here's what I really need. And I need this not just like to survive, right. but I need this for happiness, a sense of right. self, a sense of purpose. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think I, I said to you earlier, you know, did I want Wayne Shorter to call me and take me out on tour when I was a young guy? Absolutely. I did. Yeah. Was that going to work with, the things I needed to do, you know, like, like, you know, like, like I want this, but really, you, you know, like, is that, would that actually be good if I got that? Well, then I have to ask, you know, your kids are right. older, you know, things are going well. Herbie Hancock band calls up and says, we need, the, we, we need the bell tower three month tour, hop in the van. What do you say? <laughs> there would be a summit with the wife for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would head into her office and we the would have, summit. A, we would have a sit down. Yeah, that no, would be great. Yeah. Chris yeah, Bell, yeah. thank you again. I've thoroughly enjoyed our time. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, it's great to be here. Thank you.